that's the sound of music. Whoa, whoa, bring it along. That's the sound of music. And breakfast with Bob. And Pancho Man. We're brought to you by Hooked Up Polar. You can. Bella Fix. Norma Tech Active, Canyon Bicycles, Form Goggles, Amp Human, our championship edition, Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai. We're at Huggles on the Rocks for the 10th year in a row. One of our favorite guests, Coach Jim Vance. About a round of applause for Jimmy. How you doing, Jim? I'm great, great. Swam with the Dolphins this morning. They were out I saw beautiful. the Dolphins out there. Yeah. I think in your last interview, uh, Heidi and I saw them jumping out there. They were so. jumping all yeah, over the place. Beautiful. So we were just chatting beforehand about for your runners and running with, now that you have numbers for running with power, what do you tell them coming off the bike? What should they be doing? Well, I always try to, well, I mean, you know, I've been on this show a number of years talking about that first mile and how people go too fast and things. And really, when I when I first started that, I did that because I don't think people really understood how fast these guys were running. Right. You know, and they, it's hard to believe that when a guy's you know can ride sub 420 out here and in this heat and come off and run a 520 mile for his first mile off the bike, which is a ridiculously fast pace for a marathon that would you know blow Patrick Lang's uh, record time out of the water. So, you know, I wanted to quantify that and show people and then really start to look at you know who was running intelligently, who wasn't. Uh, but it's all that was all a feel thing. And then along came running power, and we've been able to. Uh, to really quantify that number as a work rate, right? Well, what's and what makes sense? And uh, I was just talking with uh, the guys at Stride at their event yesterday, and shared that in some of my research, I have three athletes racing, two age groupers, one pro, uh, and with one of my age groupers with the with his power, we started. I started to notice uh, a lot of his uh, training runs where we were, where we're simulating uh, Ironman uh, goal pace and things was only about five percent higher watts than his uh, than his easy runs. So suddenly now I had I kind of had a number that I've been looking at. So uh, it's been it's been kind of a cool breakthrough to kind of be able to see that and have faith in that number to know, hey, don't go over this. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're so fatigued, you're not going to be running hard. You know, it's you shouldn't be running. Yeah, you shouldn't be running that hard. I mean, it's going to feel hard, but the way you're moving through space is is about the equivalent of what you're doing in an easy run. I mean, these guys could all go out here today and run six minute pace for a marathon and still be able to toe the line the next day. I mean, yes. most of them, they're, they're that fit. Right. So, 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 I mean, to think that they, that they couldn't do, you know, that they couldn't do a little bit more than their easy effort would, would make sense. So it's, it's very, um, it's still, it's still in the new phases still, but right. this is what this technology is bringing us new pacing abilities. You know, we've, I've had a lot of success with Ben in 70.3. Yeah, Ben Canute, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and well, I'm trying to balance, he's one of the few guys trying to balance the Olympic and 70.3. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it was, I mean, you look at this year. I mean, the year he's had was amazing. I think, really, uh, we had two disappointing races, I'd say. 70.3 Worlds wasn't quite what we wanted, mm -hmm. obviously, and uh, Challenge Championship. Uh, Samarin, yeah. Samarin didn't didn't go well. Well, that one was more of well, let's try and sneak this one in. Let's try and get a paycheck. And that's always tough. That, that was a mistake. But um, you know, I, I mean, this year he, I mean, he won Oceanside seventy point three, Barbados ITU. He won St. Anthony's. And he got a silver medal at Chengdu World Cup. He got a top seven at a WTS uh, Edmonton. Right. He got he won Alcatraz for the third time. He. You know, he got a silver medal in uh, Abu Dhabi in the mixed relay, a silver, uh, bronze medal at the Tokyo Test event. I mean, that's that's a that's career a year, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it was it was awesome. So, uh, I mean, and then and then he I think he finished fifth overall in the Super League series in Singapore, mm -hmm. and now he's coming off his best finish ever, a fourth at at uh, Jersey, where he was even injured going into the race with a peck, and somehow somehow manages to still swim incredibly well, right. run really well. I mean. I think the biggest thing we've seen with Ben is he's he's just mentally more confident. That's why he's so consistent. He races near the front. He expects that he's going to do well. He doesn't care about anybody else's resume. And you know, at this level, you got to have that. I mean, look at this field right here. This I mean, field is now you've <laughs> because of Ben. You've been you've seen a lot of Alistair Brownlee. Yes. <laughs> How do you assess him for this race? Oh, he's he's here to he's here to make waves. There, there's a, I don't no question. I, I don't buy this. Uh, I'm just here to learn. No, <laughs> no, 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 Alistair. That, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, as Jan Ferdano says, uh, Alistair doesn't go anywhere to win, not to win. Agreed, yeah. agreed. Um, you know, there's with with Alistair. In my opinion, there's no way he's going to be pre he's fully prepared to win this race physically. Yet he just yet yet right now um, his 70.3 prep. 
I mean, I heard him in a podcast say, well, I'm going to come off 70.3 rolls. That's going to be focused. I'm going to do a little four-week block and then, you know, try to win the world championship. Right. <laughs> you know, he didn't say that specifically, but he's like a four-week block. Yeah. And I'm laughing. I'm like, he thinks a four-week block is going to prepare him for this race. Like, <laughs> that, doesn't include, that doesn't include coming off Nice, recovering from Nice, and then tapering for this. It's that stuff. So and I mean, taking second in Nice. He had yeah. all the race. Yeah, he did. So, you know, it, look, he's, he's – I fully expect that he he's going to come off probably with with Jan. Uh, he's never going to let those guys go. He's going to do everything he can, and he'll probably run too aggressively early. And I think by 20k he'll probably fade. But that I mean, what do I know? I, you know, I I could very well be wrong. He could be strolling down elite, yeah. you know, ready to put the crown on him. So from your studies of that first mile, mm-hmm. the last couple of years, who have been the most cons- the the ones who, because what you do is you measure that first mile, get mm-hmm. a split, and see how that goes along with the marathon pace throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, well, Bart Arnott's very good. No surprise, got second last year. Well, and what was smart is Bart mm-hmm. and Cody, uh, Bart was out there, and other guys, when Patrick Lange came through, mm-hmm. they went with him. Yeah. Bart didn't. Yeah. Bart stayed confident in his approach and then ran his way up to second place yeah. when he was ready. Yeah. You know, that, and that's the thing. It's it's everybody, and and I try with all my athletes to get them any athlete I work with to get them to not judge a race in a moment, you know don't you know especially a race like this you can't come off the bike and think well that's it first mile might as well forget their last twenty five let's just call it call it done here right. you know it's like no there there's a lot that can happen and so you you got to stay confident in your plan and and execute it you know it's I I say there's six six parts to high performance the first three are preparation 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 the last three are execution 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 you know you can do all the preparation you don't have the execution doesn't matter right you know you you've blown all that hard work and you can be the best at pacing out here but if you haven't put in the preparation to be to be ready to you know to leverage it then you're gonna you know, you're not gonna get your goals so it's uh it's a fine line i like uh you know i like i like sebastian's line fit and eft Yes, a fine, fit, line, or, yeah. the fine line between <laughs> fit or F. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And I think I think racing at this level is the same. You know? So do you see next year we have an Olympic year, and mm-hmm. there, now we have two Olympic uh, triathlons, right? We have the Olympic triathlon, and we have the mixed relay, which mm-hmm. is a huge addition to the sport, and I think it's going to be a, a great television event. Mm-hmm. And that's, what, that's really Ben's focus. Yeah, you know, it was 2016 here in October. Ben's, ben and I sat down, and... And uh, he was ready to make a coaching change and talked with me. And I had known Ben for a long time since he was like 14, his whole family, and yeah. kind of given some advice through times uh, in his career. And and uh, he said, look, I want to win 70.3 World Championships, and I want to win an Olympic medal in the mixed relay. And I said, well, why don't we just go to the track and field World Championships, win the 100, and the marathon? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> two that's different two, two, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's entirely two ends of the spectrum. And... And I said, okay, well, let's. Let, I came up with some an idea. I said, I think this is going to work. This approach, and he's jumped on board, and it's been great. And you know, the, one of the funny things too is a lot of people don't realize is, I, in that same meeting, I told Ben, look, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need full commitment. I'm going to need to. You're going to have to commit to data. I'm going to have to see and learn new things because what we're doing has never been done before. What we're trying to do, and we're with and we're, all ba- the data. Yeah, and we're coming into a new sport. Right. I mean, literally, the mixed relay is it's basically it's a new ha- sport. It hasn't happened in the Olympics yet. Yes, yeah. No. So we didn't know. So I was like, I got to learn. So I'm going to need you to commit to data. And, and I said, and then everybody's kind of hiding their data. We're going to give yours away for free. And he said, he said, okay, yeah, I can do that. And I said, the re- and the reason why is people are going to know that we're data guys and we're willing to share data and the products we use to, that, that we learn from the data are, are, you know, obviously have a lot of credibility. And so new companies with new technology will come to us first, and yes. that'll be our advantage over our competition. And suddenly, you know, new things, Stride, Today's Plan, other, other companies that we use, it, it's, it's amazing how much I've learned about uh, Ben and, and what, he, what he does as an athlete and, and through this process. And, and, I mean, the results speak for themselves. I mean, the consistency he's shown, you know, the, the mental breakthroughs. I mean, the mental breakthroughs have actually come because training's gone so well. Right. You know, he's hitting numbers, and he comes into the cycle, and, you know, I think at times he's like, man, I can't believe I'm still getting faster. We, we got him down to, like, 354 in the 1500. When he came to me, he was like a 410 guy. 
you know so i mean that and that's mixed relay specific and so uh you know it's an exciting time with with the mixed relay uh, i i think i think all of america will be watching because no question we we have a we have a metal contending team mm -hmm. and you know uh, and it's going to be you know i don't know Obviously, Ben still has to be named to the team, but we're certainly operating on, with an understanding that he's probably going to be named. So the, the way it works, the mixed relay, do you also race in the open in the regular triathlon, or is it two separate groups? No, no, you, 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 earn, you get two. Right now, the men have two spots. We could potentially earn a third. Right. So you've got to make your team out of and your individuals out of, out of those spots. That's all you get. You get right, three spots. Right, so yeah, so right, right now, we have two for the men. We have three for the women and two for the men. So those have to be your individuals on the individual list, individual start line, and the and your and part of your selection for your mixed relay. You can't can't go out and grab another. So right. so no. So uh, would he race the individual race? Well, that's a that's a decision to be determined after we kind of know who the team is, right. uh, what what uh, what strategy we want to take. Um, I think you know obviously Ben could. Ben has the skill and ability to be a domestique at, at the highest level for maybe a runner. Right. Um, you know, but we'll see. Uh, you know, we, we gotta we gotta see if an American male can prove that they're a you know a medal contender uh, to make that a worthwhile worthwhile effort. Um, so, yeah, the answer is I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so when you look at uh, the U.S. from mm -hmm. the Olympic side, obviously we've had a lot of success identifying women. Mm -hmm. out of college as mm -hmm. swimmers, runners, and, and having them learn a bike from Glenn sure. Jorgensen to Summer Cook to uh, Katie Zavaris. Mm -hmm. And the men's side, that, that doesn't work, um, right? Because you got uh, talking to Alistair yesterday, he started at the age of eight, and Javier and all those guys. So mm -hmm. it's different. Do you see we have a new program down in Arizona where mm -hmm. kids are being identified younger, mm -hmm. and men are being identified younger, and are working out down there? Do you see that as potentially something to develop some Olympians for us? Well, I wouldn't say that they've been identified younger. They, they've been the in our system. Okay. What we're doing is we're just giving them that opportunity to go to college and focus on triathlon. Right. And that's, you know, if you look at it, Canute, <coughs> Canute is really the only athlete that decided, no, I'm not going to go to a single sport. I'm going to go to, I'm going to choose a school that's going to give me the most opportunity, the best opportunity to prepare myself to be the best triathlete I can be. Mm -hmm. And then he chose University of Arizona, went to, you know, was coming out of Chicago. Right. Great environment there, you know, was able to train with incredible cyclists, good runners, incredible triathletes, great swimmers. They had the facilities, the routes, the weather. And he graduated in three years and was immediately off and running. And, uh, you know, it, and he, like I guess he's probably our most successful American in the sport. He took that approach. It's very similar to like a Brownlee. Right. Uh, so I think there's something to be said for that. So any, any sort of opportunities that we can do to bring that along are great. But that said, you know, a realistic person has to say, look at the cost of education in our country. Look at, look at, uh, you know, the value of, of what it can bring if the right school is knocking on your door. I get a lot of families that ask me, Jim, what do you think we should do? And I say, you know, if you've got a, an Ivy League school, an opportunity, and they're willing to give you some academic money and things or something, and you want to go there, I, I say take it. A Stanford, a Michigan, a, sure. you know, a great, great university, you should take that opportunity. A scholarship uh, to go and run a, one of those programs or swim for one of them, it, uh, you know, I, you got to think long term. You know, one crash can end your career, and that'll be that. So certainly you don't want to think that way, but uh, it's reality. It's reality. So. Uh, yeah. The other thing you uh, you train Amy Dixon. You, you I did, trained, yes, you, I yeah, did. You trained, mm -hmm. What do you learn from working with para athletes? They're very passionate. Amy is definitely very passionate. Um, a lot of challenged athletes as well. Uh, you know, and it's it's exciting. They're uh, they're very much uh, committed. I see a commitment level and and focus that's that's excellent. Um, you know, and and what I see is. A lot of learning. I see an increase in the competition. Yeah, it's uh, really gotten deeper. It's getting the board. very deeper. Uh, you know, thanks to things like even like Challenge Athletes Foundation giving giving grants out mm -hmm. to so many athletes because that's you know wheelchairs and certain things for certain athletes can be extremely Trust expensive. Athletes, yeah. yeah, and even even you know the travel around the world. Right. With some of these para para triathlon series, uh, World Para Tri series is 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 extremely costly. So. Uh, you know, it's great to see. I think I think we're only going to see it grow more, uh, especially. I mean, the stories some of these people have are just just incredible. You know, I know when we work the the, the challenge athletes camp, 
I'm just amazed at some of the people I meet and you right. know and what what they've been through and some of the things and it's incredible and you know and and for a lot of them it's if it's been an accident they they're going through you know obviously some potentially some grief and some emotional mm -hmm. stress of the their life changing and so it's inspiring to see them dedicate themselves to something and and grow and see the improvement and uh, yeah I've, I've 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 been thrilled to be a part of that whenever I can be so. Ben Canute, obviously, 70.3, and uh, will, he, will he try to do 70.3 next year as well? Or oh, will absolutely. All be Olymp oh, so do absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's next year, it's after the Olympics. Yes. Which is great. Excellent. And actually after Kona. Yes. I was mentioning that to Alistair Brownlee. I said, you know, you could go and do the Olympics, go do Ironman Worlds, and go do 70.3 Worlds. That'd be a nice tri yeah. triple. Well, let's hope he's a little back tired back. by the time he gets to 70.3 Worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no, it's... Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna play in the year as though Ben's gonna be named to the team. Yeah. Um, and the mixed relay will be August first in Tokyo, and after that, we'll pretty much turn our attention to seventy point three worlds. That's that's gonna be, so it's gonna be nice. I think we can keep the volume. That's a low. nice block. It is nice. B b keep, nice gap between. Yeah, keep the volume low. Really focus on mixed relay types of abilities. Let him come off that. He'll have a fresh stimulus of of new new longer yeah. aerobic work to be ready for seventy point three worlds and. And I expect he'll probably be fitter than ever. I mean, uh, we've been able to do that every year. This year, 70.3 Worlds didn't go well like we wanted, but he was fitter than he's ever been, and he knew that. Yeah. There was only four guys that really had a chance to win that race at the top of that mountain, and he was one of them. You know, him, Brownlee, Gustav, and Rudy. Right. And, you know, Rudy knew those roads. Rudy had been prepping for that race for two that years. Yeah. That, I mean, he was all in on that. Um, he knew that descent way better than Ben, and he proved it. And, uh, you know, and... I told Ben after that race, you know, I, I felt like Ben Ben was ready to run 110 off the bike, even on that course. And I said, you run 110, you still get fourth. It's true. <laughs> which which yeah. is not an improvement no. off where we were last year. But And that's been the thing. The bar keeps raising in 70.3. Go back to Chattanooga. I mean, Ben ran 116. 116 right? he ran high. 116, and Gomez ran 110, mm -hmm. right? To beat him. Yeah. And, this, and then last year in South Africa, it was 106, 107, 108. Yes. And Ben <laughs> ran 112 there. Yeah. Then this, you know, which was his best ever. And then now, you know, now this year he's up in the front. He fades to a 116. Yes. In 10th, which is what he, when, he, when he was at 2017 Worlds, everybody was like, what an amazing run. 116. Now he's fading to that. So, you know, it's. But that's the thing. The bar keeps raising. And the problem is we can't control the bar. No. You know, we can only control no. us. We keep improving, thinking we're getting close to the bar, and we realize, no, the bar just got raised again. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> like, because, you know, when it was Jan, uh, Jan, Ali, and Gomez, yes. that was like, that was the greatest 70.3 race ever. 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 And then now you come to this one, and, and Ben's fitter, ready, the course is harder, and these guys go, you know. They take it another yeah, level. Yeah, take it to another level. And it was just absolutely. Uh, you just have to keep changing uh, your numbers, yeah, that's all. Exactly. And I love it. Tip Jimmy, our hat and come thanks, back next year. Thanks as always for sure. taking some time. Jim Vance awesome. has been our guest, everybody. Pacho Man, take us out. Bring the along, that's the sound of music. Whoa, whoa. Bring the along, that's the sound of music. On breakfast with Bob.